You're watching Power Nation. Today on Engine Power, we build a high compression race engine that's one part small block Chevy and one part LS. Plus, after years of ordering custom camshafts, we finally get to see how they're made. Hey everyone, welcome to Engine Power. Today we are extremely excited to start our new project. We are building a high compression race engine. We don't get to do them that often, but when we do, we have a great time with it. This one is application specific like all of our other builds, but this one is going down to our buddies in Carcass. They are building a 1972 split bumper Camaro race car and they needed some motivation for it. So we are putting some parts together and we are gonna make them some power. But before we got any of these parts, we wanted to make sure we did the right thing for them. So we talked to Jeremy and Jimmy to see what kind of power they needed. So like the reality behind this car is it's gonna be a real race car. It's not gonna see any time on the road. So as far as us really kind of beating on this thing, it's gonna take a beating. So we need something that's gonna withstand how we drive, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we'll have you guys out at the track to maintain this for us yeah. because we don't want to be responsible for <laughs> such a cool and expensive engine. So. We wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, part of doing the engine is, uh, in a real race operation, is the engine builders go with the car and they, they're the ones that are responsible for how well it runs. Yep. You know, the old, uh, the adage is, uh, you know, the chassis builder you know, gets you to the finish line, the engine builder determines when. After talking with the guys down in Carcass a bit more, we determined that they need at least 700 horsepower and they need it in a small block, naturally aspirated package. They also wanted something a bit unique. So the base of our build is going to be a World Products Motown LS block. And this is a little bit different if you're not familiar. It uses a small block Chevy bottom end, but allows LS induction to be bolted to the top. This gives us the small block Chevy benefits of great windage control and a solid foundation, but the high flow ability of LS heads. We're gonna be filling it with a K1 Technologies four inch stroke forged crankshaft, a set of manly I-beam connecting rods, and a forged 2618 Weissco set of pistons at 4185 bore. If you're doing some quick math, that means this engine is going to be 440 cubic inches. Those pistons are gonna be filled with Summit Racing's gas ported piston rings. For the heads, we needed something that was gonna flow a ton of air, so we reached out to the guys at Late Model Engines, better known as LME, and they set us up with a set of their CID LS7 castings, and they fit the bill perfectly. They flow over 400 CFM. They also gave us the set of Crower rockers that match them, the matching billet LS7 intake, and as a special treat, a set of their valve covers with our logo engraved in them. Jessel provided one of their belt drives that is specific to this engine, and you don't see a camshaft, but we're gonna be getting that later. This engine is going to be fuel injected, and it's all gonna be controlled with a Holley HP ECU. And that will be a huge benefit in a road race car because we won't have to deal with fuel sloshing or fuel evaporation like you would have with a carburetor. Now, this is a ton of parts and this is going to be a very extreme build. And we're super excited. We can't wait to get it on the dyno and start thrashing on it. But there is a ton of work that needs to happen first, especially a ton of block machining and block prep that needs to happen before we can start assembly. So our first step is to get it in the Sunnen SV15 cylinder hone and set our bore size and surface finish. With our block fastened down and the stones changed in our Sunnen SV15, it is time to bolt our ICT billet torque plate to our block. And to do that, we're gonna be using our favorite fasteners, ARP. They've built a specific kit for this combination with an LS head on this particular block. These bolts are 7 16ths in diameter, not a stock 11 millimeter like an LS. And they also protrude out of the back of the torque plate the same amount as they do the cylinder head. So the distortion is the same for assembly, so we are good to go. These bolts are made out of 8740 chrome molly and have 180,000 PSI of tensile strength, way higher than the OEM fastener. With all of their kits, ARP includes their ultra torque lube and a very detailed set of instructions. Because these are not OEM fasteners, they do not take OEM torque values. The instructions are there to make sure that you utilize the fasteners to their greatest potential. Virtually any fastener can be improved on an engine, and that's why we love ARP. If they don't have it, they will make it for you. So we're gonna get all our stuff bolted up and get honing. We'll use a spare Cometic MLS head gasket that's just like the one we're using during engine assembly. 
The torque plate is torqued down in sequence to a final value of 70 pound-feet, just like the cylinder head will be later. Using a 220 grit diamond abrasive, we will get within two ten thousandths of final size. This creates correct bore geometry and the base for our final finish. Our block was precision bored to ten thousandths undersized by our favorite machine shop, Shacklet Automotive. We'll switch to a 600 grit diamond to set both final size and proper plateau finish for our application. As always, we check every cylinder with a profilometer. It's like we're in heaven. It's just engine parts everywhere, you know? Up next, two kids in a candy store. Whether it's an off-the-shelf design or a custom grind, for years we have depended on comp cams to provide precisely the camshaft we need. So of course, we reached out to them for help on the Carcass Road Course Camaro project. The camshaft for our engine is custom in a couple of different ways. One, it is unique to our particular application, and two, it is unique to the platform. So we came here to Memphis, Tennessee, right straight to the experts. Comp Cam's the leader in valve train technology, and lo and behold, our camshaft is right here. Kind of. This is what our camshaft is going to start out as, a solid chunk of 8620 steel. But there's a ton of processes it needs to go through before we can actually put it in the engine. And all that happens here at Comp Cams in this facility. Everything from design to packaging and shipping. And we have a really cool opportunity to watch as a custom cam gets built. Let's go. Yeah. Even though our Motown engine combines a small block Chevy bottom end with LS induction, Comp Cams has got us covered. So I think we've got a good series for you. We've got our RC series of lobes, um, really race-oriented designs, um, but with your package, they'll also provide the longevity and um, easy maintenance that you need. Um, good spring life out of it. 800 horsepower out of this thing should be no problem <laughs> yeah, with yeah. This, this choice here. Using Comp's dedicated software, Chris showed us how our camshaft would perform compared to other options. Once we got the cam all specced out, we wanted to see how Comp camshafts are actually made. So once we finish the engineering on the camshaft and know exactly what we're going to build, we take it to a mill basically and uh, it gets turned into what we call a spool. So a round lobe spool. So basically all the spacing on the lobes is done, the journals are semi-finished, and it just looks like a round piece of bar stock, except it's started to have some separations in it. As we take that spool, we put it into our, our eco mill, and it starts to shape the lobe so that it starts to look like a camshaft, the oblong shape. And what we'll do at that point is, depending on the type of material that the camshaft is made of, we'll get it close to the size, and then we'll take it and heat treat it at that point. Once it's heat treated, then we can go start getting to the next steps of actually finishing the camshaft. We take it to one of our actual cam grinders or finishing machines. There's two steps. We do a rough grind on it, and then we do a finish grind on it. Obviously, there are two different speeds. We just kind of get it close with the rough grind, and then we slow the machine down so that it puts a really nice finish, all the right concave, convex, tapers, whatever we're doing on that particular lobe is all done at that point, and then the camshaft is near completion at that point. So after that, the camshaft goes to our QC lab. Everything on the camshaft is checked. We check journal size, we check the lobes themselves to make sure that they match the profile or the design that we've picked for the camshaft, make sure the lobe separation is correct, the intake center line is correct, and all the camshafts have a serial number on them. So that's how everything is traced back is based on that serial number. So this is basically where all the camshafts get their final checks. So we do some visual inspections on the camshafts here, as well as a digital inspection as well with our ad coal machine. So you can see kind of what it's doing right now. It's going through the process of checking three different spots on the, on the lobe itself. So on both sides and in the middle, check the journals as far as the size goes. Yep. And if it's good, it goes into the box. And that's every cam. Every single through. camshaft. Once it's gone through QC and we know that the camshaft is exactly what we're supposed to have, um, then if we do the MSE polishing or the microsurface enhancement, it will go through that final process, get polished, and then it goes into the box. Here, tucked away in the back of the building, we found the Research and Development Center. They have a ton of cool toys, and this is where a lot of the development happens for new products. I cannot tell you how excited we are to be here, so let's get on in there and see what's going on. Yeah. All of the Edelbrock Group test their products here, including Edelbrock, TCI, and Comp Cams. 
We perform performance testing, durability testing, and fully evaluate the products before they go to market. Oftentimes start on the Spintrons where we'll track the, the valve motion, determine any performance benefits, and then go through a full durability there. Once it passes that test, it'll move on to the engine dynos. On the engine dynos, we'll check the horsepower performance and figure out what the power benefit of the product is. When that's completed, oftentimes it goes to a vehicle for further testing to make sure that there's no durability concerns in a running engine. Now that we've seen firsthand what goes into the design, manufacturing, and testing of comp cams, we've got an even deeper appreciation of their products. Coming up, from induction packages to TCI transmissions, we check out everything the Edelbrock Group has to offer. Plus, the Motown LS gets the precision balance it needs for high RPM stability. The Comp Cans facility was amazing, so we had to come just down the road to the Edelbrock Group headquarters here in Olive Branch. Now, this isn't only their headquarters, it's also a warehouse and has manufacturing capability. It's a massive building and it has a ton of cool stuff inside, so I'm pretty excited to go in. Hopefully, they'll let us take some stuff with us. Maybe. I hope so. I don't know. Let's go. Stop running, no running. This 300,000 square foot building became Edelbrock's home after the move from California to Mississippi. In the process of the move, what we did is we actually brought our intake manufacturing in-house here in this facility. So what we do is, is we actually have our foundry based out of California. They cast all of our manifolds, superchargers, intakes, uh, cylinder heads, anything you can imagine. So what we do is we get the raw castings in-house here, and in turn, we have our CNC machine operators turn them into a finished product put on the shelf. It goes from step by step, QC process of the castings to the finished machining goods. Every part of it is touched, as you'll see, and uh, turns out to a great American-made product. The Edelbrock Group also includes Comp Cams, Fast, Russell Performance, and TCI Automotive. The spacious warehouse provides ample room for inventory, so chances are, when you order anything, it's in stock. That's something you simply cannot take for granted these days. One of the crucial parts of being a part of the Edelbrock Group is, is all the brands and all the products. What that means is a lot of things need to be on the shelf and readily available to ship out the door. You know, we've got raw goods that have to be machined and or assembled. We've got finished goods that are on the shelf and ready to ship. It's a constant flow that you have to maintain on a daily basis to make sure we supply our customers' needs. The technical support department fields about a thousand calls a day, and their staff is ready to answer questions about a wide range of applications. The first customer shoot could be a guy restoring a motor home. Next guy could be racing tugboats. Valid statement. We make camshafts for racing tugboats. <laughs> That's hilarious. For almost anything you're working on, if it's got an engine, Edelbrock's got the parts and knowledge to make it perform better. Just down the road in Ashland, Mississippi, we arrived at TCI. TCI was founded in 1968 as Torque Converters Incorporated. Today, they sell complete high-performance transmissions as well as drivetrain and transmission components. About 80% of their products go to street enthusiasts with 20% headed to hardcore drag and circle track racers. TCI has been around for a long time, over 40 years. For the last 20 years, it's been a part of the Comp Cams team. And now, of course, with the merger with Edelbrock, now it's all one big happy family. Pretty much everything to do with transmissions, torque converters, and all the components that go around it. So it's definitely a very uh, complex line, especially when it comes to manufacturing all the transmissions and building everything, all the torque converters, shifters, and everything that goes with it. So yeah, it's definitely a, a pretty full line. It all starts with the core transmissions and torque converters that come in from all across the country. After thorough inspection and measurement, only those units that are up to TCI's specifications will be rebuilt. The other 30% are rejected outright. The classic transmissions everyone remembers are still in high demand, but TCI is building those future classics as well. Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of turbo 350s, 400s, you know, some of the older school stuff, but as we progress, yes, absolutely, we're doing a lot more of the modern electronic overdrive transmissions. We've got a new dyno that we can test these things with. So yeah, absolutely looking forward to the future of growing the business into new and more modern transmissions all the time. If you need something built to order, TCI is ready. 
but we have a complete lineup of you know custom type stuff our pro x transmissions for the racing applications where they're a lot more specific to you know a type of racing or a type of vehicle so you can pretty much do just about anything you want when it comes to transmissions quality assurance is critical every transmission is dyno tested before it ships one of the big steps is dynoing the transmission. So that basically allows us to check all the pressures to make sure the transmission is shifting, make sure there's no leaks, all those types of things before the transmission goes out the door. Every part number we produce, somebody cared about that as they were producing it because that is their life's work in that box. Yeah, I have a question. Stuff, yeah. What's your favorite part of all this? You've been here, I can say, 39 years. What, what's, what, what, get, what gets you going to work in the morning? I What's enjoy what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm a racer at heart. This is Jeff Reed. This is what I do. I get up at 5 o'clock every morning. I'm at work at 5.30, and I leave between 3.30 and 4 every day. I live five minutes from here. You know, I, I go to the local racetrack 30 minutes away. I go to Jackson, Tennessee. You know, people go to the movies on weekends. More likely I'm at the track. <laughs> That's awesome. With such a dedicated and experienced crew, the Edelbrock Group continues to make the parts that gearheads want. So everything we do and what we've done is very purposeful, and we're going to continue that going forward into the next upcoming years. Up next, the Motown LS build continues with race-ready piston rings and a balanced rotating assembly. Welcome back to the shop. We are continuing on the build of our 440 cubic inch Motown LS. Now that we have our custom camshaft, the next thing we're going to be doing is balancing the rotating assembly. And this is something we do for every engine, but is extremely important on this one since as a road race engine, it's going to see extended time at high RPM. We're going to be using our CWT Industries multi bow 5500 to get our crankshaft exactly where we want it. And we have all of our parts laid out so we can start grabbing weights building bob weights, and spin our crank. Every component is weighed individually and entered into CWT software to automatically generate our bob weight. With each of the bob weights installed, we'll do our first spin to check the amount of imbalance in the crank. All right, so we've gone ahead and we got our first spin and looking at the numbers, this crank is very much out of balance, but we knew we were gonna have that because we're using a heavy duty wrist pin for our power level. So it has a little bit more weight than a standard one. We're at 3.325 ounce inches on the rear and 2.49 ounce inches on the front. And that is actually a lot of imbalance at 8,000 RPM where this crank's gonna be turning. That's gonna put 377 pounds of force on the crank. So we're gonna get it tuned in and get it down to our tolerance of eighth ounce inch. So we don't have to add any new holes to our crankshaft. We use the drill mounted on the machine to drill existing holes and a grinding wheel to remove material in order to get our crank to our balance tolerance. All right, so we've got our crank balanced to our tolerance of eighth ounce inch and we are well under that on the front and rear and we have the forces on the opposite side of the crank so we can see under this tab that it, on the center of the crank, it minimizes the force down to 0 0.042 ounce inch. So we're gonna save that as our last spin because that looks good. And we can see on our print screen how much we've minimized the force on the crank down to just 12 pounds at 8,000 from 377 what it was before. So that looks good. We'll get it off and get it cleaned. We still have our Motown LS block in our Sunnen SV15 cylinder hone because we were letting some of that hone oil drain out of it. But with the torque plate still installed, we're going to take this opportunity to set our piston ring end gaps. When we started gathering parts for this build, one of our first calls was to total seal piston rings because they have been a leader in piston ring and cylinder hone technology for racing everything from F1 to circle track. And a lot of that technology has trickled down to benefit the hot rodder. We told them our parts combination and our application and they immediately spec'd out a piston ring set to match our pistons. They also recommended that we run a gas ported top ring. And what that is, is a recent innovation that they've come out with. They take the top piston ring and machine horizontal ports in the top of it to allow combustion gases to get behind the ring, 
force it out against the cylinder wall and more effectively seal combustion. And that is a huge benefit because if we can't seal combustion, we can't make horsepower. The ring set they spec'd out is a 1.2 millimeter, 1.2 millimeter, three millimeter set with a steel top ring, a ductile iron second ring, and a steel oil control ring pack that is rated at 11 pounds. Cool innovation and technology like this is why we love working with Total Seal. And they've partnered with Summit Racing Equipment to offer that at an affordable price in Summit Racing's gas ported piston ring sets. We're going to go ahead and get some of our rings in our cylinder bores, start checking them, and setting our piston ring end gaps. After installing the ring, we'll use a modified piston ring compressor to square the ring in the bore. This is a file to fit ring set, so we can use the Summit Racing ring filer to set our top ring gap at 26 thousandths and our second ring gap at 28 thousandths. Each ring is carefully deburred and checked in its cylinder. Well, how'd you make out? Pretty good. This is the last ring, so all the rings are gapped, the crank is balanced, we are moving along here. Yes, we are moving along, but we still have plenty to do. We have to get this block out, get it deburred, and get it clean so we can start putting parts in it. Then we are going to assemble the bottom end, top end, and thrash this thing on the dyno so the guys down in Carcass have a great race bullet. And if you want to see more builds from us, everything from mild to racy like this one, you can go find Engine Power at Power Nation. Our ideal race engine would be rock solid reliable at high RPM and give us tons of torque whenever we need it. Lucky for us, that's exactly what we're building today. Hey everyone, welcome to Engine Power. Today we are getting back on our full race 440 cubic inch Motown LS for the guys down in Carcass. Now this is a true racing engine with big compression, an aggressive camshaft, high flowing induction, and it's gonna make big power over a wide power band on our dyno. We've done plenty already and we still have a bunch to do, but to get you caught up on where we are right now, check this out. The crew from Carcass is building a 1972 split bumper Camaro and they requested a strong, reliable race bullet with 700 horses or more. The Motown LS with its small block bottom end and LS top end fits the bill perfectly. We hone the cylinders to achieve the proper plateau finish on our Sun and SV15 and then we balance the rotating assembly on the CWT Industries Multiball 5500. On a high RPM race engine, a precise balance job is critical. Then we set the ring gap at 26 thousandths on the top ring and 28 thousandths on the second ring. That was a ton of great work, but there is a lot more to go before we can actually start bolting parts into our engine. This block comes with bronze lifter bore bushings installed from the factory, but they're not finished to size because that is up to the engine builder to correctly set the lifter clearance they need for their application. And to do that, we needed some specialized tooling. So we reached out to the guys at Goodson because they have a huge engine building catalog and they are a leading supplier of sun and honing tools and consumables. And they set us up with this portable lifter bore hone. We got the mandrel, the adapter, and this portable driver that we can chuck directly into an electric drill the correct stones, truing sleeve, and stone dresser. We love working with Goodson because they have a ton of engine building tools like this that make engine building more efficient and accurate for everyone, DIYers all the way up to professional engine builders. This portable driver is easily chucked into a half inch drill, so the process can be done just about anywhere. We left our block in the hone so we can take advantage of Sunnen's honing oil. We're using medium pressure on the stones and turning the drill at a low speed. We'll hone a little bit and check our work often. It's always easier to remove material than to put it back. The abrasive's tension is adjusted with the knob at the top. We stroke the stones to achieve the proper crosshatch pattern, just like a cylinder bore. It takes us about five minutes per lifter bore to get our needed clearance of 15 10 thousandths.
After cleaning the block in the jet washer to remove most of the honing oil, we can move on to hand prepping our block. We'll go through and deburr any sharp edges using a hand file on the main cap registers and the main bearing saddles. After that, we'll use a carbide bit on the less critical areas on the block. We are not removing a lot of material, just breaking any sharp edges. Like we do with all of our bare blocks, we'll port the oil galleries with various carbide bits, smoothing out any sharp edges and turns to improve oil flow. With all of the block work done, we'll put the engine in the jet washer for about an hour at 150 degrees to knock off the heavy bits and start the final cleaning process. Coming up, the Motown power plant gets a bulletproof bottom end, high flowing LS induction, and the ultimate racing EFI system. On today's Summit Tech Tip, we're gonna talk about getting the right connecting rod for your project. And I have NHRA top fuel driver, Clay Milliken here to help us out. Tell us about some connecting rods and what they're good for. Well, I mean, what we got in front of us right here, we've got a standard old stock rod, GM variety. Then we've got an LS rod. The OEMs have really stepped up their game. A little bit better material. And then as we move on across here, we're getting into the rods that you can really start to turn the power up. For me, I'm always wanting more and more power. The rods that we run in the top fuel car are giant aluminum rods, but I have a lot of projects at home. I get into this area and I end up talking to the experts at Summit to find out what it is I really need for the power level I'm trying to achieve. Whether it's an H-beam, an I-beam, what material it's made out of, it's all important on the power level and the RPM you're gonna turn. 100% because what will happen if you don't put enough rod in there, it'll end up either shortening the rod, burning up the rod bearing, or actually twisting the rod from an overboost situation. You can immediately ruin a rod in one stomp of the loud pedal. Wow, there's a lot to learn in rods, and uh, if you want to consult the experts at Summer Racing, they'll definitely steer you in the right direction. They will help you right out. Our Motown LS 440 cubic inch race engine is ready for some new cam bearings. We built this special fixture to pull the bearings in place. This works better than hammering them in, and it makes it easy to locate them precisely in the cam tunnel. Next, we put in the new bearings to check main bearing vertical oil clearance. The ARP fasteners are torqued to world product spec of 70 pound feet. Then we measure it with the dial bore gauge to get our readings. We used a combination of standard and extra clearance bearings on housing number five. Housings one through four got a full set of extra clearance bearings to give us the clearances we wanted. After that, we'll check the rods the same way. Our clearance is between 26 and 29 ten thousandths, which is what we're looking for. Now we'll lube up our bearings and install the rear main seal, slightly offset from the mating surfaces. The K1 Technologies 4340 forge crankshaft is permanently laid into place. A few love taps to center the thrust bearing, and we wedge the crank into its forward thrust position. Next, we torque down the main caps for good. End play checks out at five thousandths, which is well within our spec. The Weisco forged pistons and manly rods are joined by heavy duty wrist pins and double spiral locks. Continuing on, we'll install our Summit Racing gas ported piston ring set, starting with the oil rings, followed by the second ring, and finally the aforementioned gas ported top ring. We'll coat the bores and pistons with Total Seal Assembly Lube and gently tap them into place. The rod bolt is loosened, the rod bolt stretch gauge is zeroed out, and the bolt is torqued to 95 pound-feet. This yields 53 ten thousandths stretch, which is the spec for this ARP fastener. We check each bolt for correct stretch. 
we need to restrict the oil to the top of the engine, so we have an eighth inch pipe plug with a 60 thousandths hole. To finish out, the rest of the oil passages are sealed up with quarter inch NPT pipe plugs. If you remember, we recently went to Comp Cams to see how a custom camshaft is built from start to finish. And we also went there to get one made for our Motown LS. And this is the finished product. This is a custom cam that's pretty unique to match our unique application. It is a solid chunk of 8620 steel and it uses a small block Chevy timing gear on the front, a small block Chevy distributor gear on the rear, but is set on 55 millimeter journals. The lobes are set using LS lifter bore spacing and they are set on an LS firing order. They are also sized for an 800 thousandths roller wheel diameter. We worked really closely with the valve train products manager at CompCams, Chris Potter, to spec out a series of lobes that's going to work great in our application and they come from the RC roller family. The intake has 254 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths lift and the exhaust has 268 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths lift. They are set on a 114 degree lobe separation angle and we have four degrees of advance ground into the cam. Lift at the valve will be 765 thousandths on the intake and 783 thousandths on the exhaust with our 1.8 ratio rockers. This is a beautiful piece of custom camshaft. We'll get it oiled up and slid in. Up next, a belt drive, race proven accessory drive and a hard driving valve train give this engine the power to perform. Our 440 cubic inch Motown LS is getting some really high tech race pieces, including this Jessel belt drive. This is the ultimate setup for adjustability, accuracy and durability. It allows us to move the cams intake center line wherever we want for the best balance of horsepower and torque and it dampens valve train harmonics for better stability. The included shims allow us to set up the camshafts and play between 10 and 15 thousandths, which is Jessel's specification. Because all the components are external, it's easy to service and easier to change a camshaft. Ah! Oh no, what happened here, hold on. Once Frankie finally gets everything aligned, the left hand thread center bolt is torqued to 70 pound feet. The cam is degreed and we put the intake center line at 110 degrees, which is four degrees advanced. The ATI super damper is SFI approved and built to withstand the abuse of racing. An adjustable billet timing pointer is installed and adjusted to read true TDC. Because it's a dry sump system, a conventional oil pump is not used. This block off plate seals up the passage. The ARP bolt is torqued to 50 pound feet. We hate to cover up all of these beautiful parts, but the final step is to install a one piece gasket and our Moroso circle track dry sump pan. Extreme care is taken when tightening the three bolts that are accessed through the bottom of the pan. The lifters are unique for this application and were specially built for us by Comp Cams. They feature a 904 small block Chevy body, but use LS link bars. Another unique piece is the valley cover, which is sealed up with a thin bead of silicone. Because the cylinder heads bolt to it, it was installed when the block was decked by Shacklet Automotive Machine. Before tightening it down, we use a straight edge to align it to the deck surface. The cylinder heads are a CID LS7 casting machined by our friends at Late Model Engines. The intake valves are made of titanium and have a 2250 diameter. The exhaust are 1610. They're housed in a 58cc combustion chamber and controlled by a set of PAC 1238X dual valve springs. With over 400 CFM of flow, these heads will be plenty to support our power levels. These Cometic MLS head gaskets have a 4185 bore and a 40 thousandths compressed thickness, which gives us a measured compression ratio of 13.9 to 1. This ARP head bolt kit is specifically designed for our Motown LS, and it's torqued in three stages to a final value of 70 pound feet. A Holley 36 minus one crank trigger wheel will give us accurate crank timing and is installed with the drive mandrel for our Jones Racing Products accessory drive. 
It was designed for small block Chevys, but Jones Racing adapted it to work with our hybrid engine. This is a race proven drive that has all the accessories Jeremy and Jimmy will need in the car. It also comes set up to run our Moroso five stage dry sump pump. The push rods are from Comp with a 3 8 diameter and they are 9 100 long. LME also provided this matching Crower shaft rocker setup. They have a 1.8 to 1 ratio and are installed in the firing order. The titanium intake valves receive a lash cap before the rockers are installed. Cold lash is set at 10 thousandths on the intake and exhaust. After a generous spritzing of Comp Cam's assembly lube, the custom engraved LME valve covers seal up the valve train. To connect the cylinder head steam ports, we're using this Earl's Hardline kit. This is the matching LS7 intake from LME. It's made of built aluminum and it looks awesome. You've seen us use a ton of ARP fasteners in this build and in a lot of our builds, and that is because we love working with ARP. They have a like-minded attention to detail that we really appreciate. From using high-quality materials to a really high-quality manufacturing process, they produce a ton of fasteners that are strong, durable, dimensionally accurate, and as a bonus, look really good. Everything from important fasteners like main bolts and head bolts to flywheel bolts to even more the accessory side of things like header bolts, valve cover bolts, coil pack bolts, and they even make full accessory kits for engines so that you can get an entire kit with all the accessory fasteners in the finish that you want. And even for unique applications like our 440 cubic inch Motown LS, they make fasteners that are specific to that build. And if you can't find the fasteners that you're looking for, you can call up ARP and they will make the fastener that you need. Speaking of fasteners that we need, I need these header bolts right now. They'll be holding on these stainless hooker headers that have a two inch primary and a three inch merge collector. We were originally going to use a Holley HP EFI system on this engine, but after talking with the experts at Holley and talking about the application, they actually recommended that we upgrade to their ultimate EFI system, the Dominator ECU. And this was purebred for racing. It has all the same features as the HP system, but also a ton more. Now it will control the EFI system just like normal, but it also has transmission control and a ton of extra inputs and outputs. Between the EFI system and the software, there is a ton of functionality. Everything from up to 24 low or high impedance injectors, dual wideband oxygen sensors. This thing will do nitrous control, boost control, water meth injection, even traction control if you want it to. It will run everything in the car from a 2,500 horsepower twin turbocharged engine in the front to the electric door windows if you need it to. We also got a universal main harness because we have a unique application and the matching injector harness for our Holly EFI 66 pound an hour injectors that we've already installed in the engine. We got all the sensors we need from Holly, and there's gonna be a lot of them because this is a true race engine. We want to be able to monitor everything on the engine to make sure it stays safe and happy. We're also going to be running coil near plug on this engine, so we're using a set of Holly EFI smart coils, and those are going to power the spark plugs through a set of MSD wires. This is one of the last bits we need to install on the engine before we can actually start it, and we're getting really, really excited, so let's get started. We'll meter the airflow with this Holly 102 millimeter billet throttle body. We'll wire the EFI system temporarily for the dyno, so Carcass can route it however they need to once it's in the race car. Up next, the Carcass crew sees what their race bullet can do. All right, so we have our 440 cubic inch Motown LS on the dyno. We've got it primed and we have already started it and started making some adjustments to the fuel map and the timing map, but now we are ready to make some real dyno pulls. So we went down to Carcass and grabbed Jimmy and Jeremy because this is their engine and we know they're gonna wanna see it. Pat, you're putting in some numbers here. I'm seeing like 7,000, 35, what is that? Right, what we're gonna start is, uh, we've already done a lot of preliminary stuff, so we're gonna start this pull to make some actual power pulls, starting at 3,500, going to 7,000 see where it is there, look at the fuel, and look at the timing, and then we're gonna step it up a little bit higher, and uh, this engine has a high ceiling, so uh, we're just gonna see where it is. I think, I think it's gonna be good. Let's do it. I'm excited. I, always, uh, I, I always make fun of Frankie minorly because he has to do all the wiring and everything like that, but uh, 
the end result is he just starts up. Uh, yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Here we go. Easy. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> man. I mean, that drags out a little bit. It's, it's more okay. good. Good. Yeah. That's more indicative of what it will see in the car. You know what I'm yep. saying? Yeah. Right. Right. So, Slow with low, that, 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 yeah. that, that's like yeah. a that's like a high gear yeah. pull on like a big straight. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. It's really good. Is look, look at this right here. Yeah. Just flat. Yeah. Just yeah. torque. So yeah. 500 so, pound feet. Yeah. 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 You know, 683 horse, 551 pound feet. Wow. So. Over 500 from 3700 <laughs> and on, basically. All the way so. Spice it up. You're gonna go. Yep. There yeah, you go. No, so why just, you're gonna yep. go for it. Why don't yep. we just go for it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. 4,500 to 8,000, which we built the engine to to turn 8,000 if you needed it to. We gave it a really flat torque curve so you guys could grab gears wherever you want. But if you need it to, you're running down the straight and you want to pull eight. It's built to do. Yeah, it. Yeah, I'm 75 fine with me. <laughs> <Are we> too <laughs> scary. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're gonna find out here in a second. <laughs> here we go. Man or mouse? Do it. Yeah, did that, did, that, did, that, did that look good? Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, got, yeah. got it to peek over there. Yeah. 721. 721. 721.7 at 7,700. I, 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 wow. I knew we were going to find it somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. 560.4 pound feet of torque. Yep. Yeah. And it, but wow. it carries over 500 pound feet all the way to 7,600. That's, that's that, unbelievable. Yeah. That is a mean is machine wild. right there. This is a, this is fun. Now, there's, <laughs> this is one of those things where there's a lot that this engine is capable of, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we have the cam specs specifically, so it has that big, broad torque curve, right? Yeah. If you can split, I've said it a million times, if you can split the difference and extend the distance between peak torque and peak horsepower, the car just drives that much better. Right. And you guys, because it's a four-speed transmission, and if you feel the need, you yeah. can, uh, well, you can just turn it at 8,000 yeah. if you want to, because yeah. at 8,000, yeah. 8, it's still making 713, so. Yeah. yeah, anywhere on track, we'll be able to stick our foot in it and just and get, get ourselves. on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll get it set in the Camaro. We'll come back and do a little more tuning on your chassis diamonds. Yeah. That, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's important because we can do wide open here, but yeah. all the transitional stuff, yeah. we, have to, we have to spend some time with the engine to get yeah. the tune-up right everywhere throttle, else. So. Which you guys might spend some more time at than full throttle, right, looks right, like. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's yours. Yep. Sounds so, good. Awesome job, yeah, looks guys. Pretty. See you guys. <laughs> if you want to see more racy builds like this one, check out Engine Power on Power Nation.